Please welcome the Honorable Mark Lee Greenblatt, Inspector General of the U.S. Department of the Interior and CIGI's Chairperson. Morning, everyone. Welcome to the annual CIGI Awards. What, uh, what a great day. I want to talk with you all about an American icon. I want to chat with you about a pop culture phenomenon who has swept across America. A woman who has dominated the airwaves for much of 2023. A woman who has captured the public consciousness for the American public. I want to chat with you about Barbie. <laughs> you guys thought I was going to say Taylor Swift. <laughs> I know. Not Taylor Swift, Barbie. That's why I wore my pink tie. Now, in the movie, there's a pivotal moment in which Barbie wonders about her future. The soundtrack from that moment is a hit song by Billie Eilish entitled, What Was I Made For? When I heard that, and I, and I heard that thought-provoking title, I immediately thought of the IG community. That's what happens when you're the chair of Siggy. <laughs> But Barbie's question led me to think about the OIG community and how we would answer that question. What were we made for? Now, to answer that question, we could point to our annual report to the President and Congress. We could talk about in 2022 alone, uh, our work resulted in potential savings of more than $70 billion. We could talk about how these potential savings, when compared with the OIG's collective budgets of only $3.5 billion, represent a nearly $20 return, uh, 20, uh, $20 return on investment. That's a 2,000 ROI, 2,000% ROI. We could point out last year, OIGs issued more than 3,400 audits, inspections, and evaluations with thousands of recommendations for improvement. How we closed more than 20,300 uh, 20, investigations. How we supported 4,808 indictments, 1,260 successful civil actions, and 3,204 suspensions and debarments. Those numbers certainly capture the immense impact that OIGs have on the federal government and its operations and programs. But the aggregate statistics don't tell the whole story. And today's ceremony will do just that. In today's ceremony, we will celebrate our community's work on, on critical issues ranging from cyber fraud to cyber stalking, from depleted uranium to disaster preparedness, from violent gangs to veteran suicides, from the conflict in the, in the Ukraine to the evacuation of Afghanistan, from an audit of charter school effectiveness to an evaluation of unaccompanied children at the southern border, from an investigation that led to the removal of an agency head to the prosecution of the most pro prolific addiction treatment fraud doctor ever. Now, as we celebrate these and many other exceptional projects, we should note that it's extremely difficult to recognize a relative handful of the thousands of work products that our community produces every year. The projects we honor today reflect the tremendous oversight occurring throughout our community. And everyone in our OIG family should feel represented in the award ceremony today. Now, in planning this event, we wanted to use this moment, our marquee event, our version of the Oscars, the, the one time every year that we all gather together to recognize our most impactful work. And we wanted to do that to shine a light on who our winners are and why these projects are being recognized. So this year's award ceremony is a bit of an experiment. We're trying out some new exciting elements for the show. For example, today you'll see videos highlighting the individuals and teams receiving the seven special, award, uh, special category awards, which are SIGI's highest and most prestigious awards. Note that there was a tie for one of them, so you're actually going to get eight videos. <laughs> Lucky you. We've also enhanced the awards booklet so that it provides more information about our award winners, who our awards are named after, like who is June Gibbs Brown, Buddy Sentner, and Gaston Gianni, and why our most prestigious award is named after Alexander Hamilton. 
Now, this new element is designed to build a closer connection with our community's history. So I encourage you to check it out, uh, the booklet, which we have QR codes here. Uh, it's also available on IGNet.gov. I'm excited to say that later on, we'll also have the privilege, privilege of hearing from former U.S. Secretary of Defense and retired Marine Corps General Jim Mattis through a video conversation with our very own Kevin Winters, the Inspector General at Amtrak. Secretary Mattis provides incredible insights on a variety of subjects, ranging from leadership to moral courage to the importance of IG oversight. This is a dynamite video, and I encourage you to pay attention. All told, I hope the new elements to this year's ceremony will ex enhance the experience for everyone. Now, as I close, I want to acknowledge that it's not an easy time to be in government right now, given the demands of tighter budgets, tougher competition, to hire good people, and an ever-growing list of top priorities. And it's never been an easy time to be part of the IG community. But I'm proud to say that our community has time and time again overcome our challenges by staying true to the culture of independence, neutrality, and objectivity. We remain vigilant and do our jobs well. And make no mistake, our jobs are more important than ever. The American public needs us. Everywhere we look these days, Americans are becoming more skeptical of government. They're questioning whether what they're being told is the truth or whether it's just messaging geared toward furthering someone's personal or political agenda. The American public is crying out for neutral facts, objective oversight, and unbiased analysis. That cry was perfectly timed. <laughs> Whoever did that, that's... I did not intend that, but that's a new element of the show. <laughs> In short, the American public is crying out for exactly what we do, literally. <laughs> and that is the answer to Barbie's question of what were we made for? The American people want a neutral arbiter to give them an honest assessment of government operations. That is what we were made for. The American people want an independent, objective voice that they can trust. That is what we were made for. The American people want to know that, they, that someone has their back. That is what we were made for. So for the 14,000 teammates in our larger OIG community, please keep those concepts in mind as you go forward and conduct superlative oversight. Thank you for everything you do for the American people, and enjoy the ceremony. Thanks, everybody.